Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel here at the 9 to 5 Musician. If you are new here, this is a channel all about making your life better through music and learning about the daily lives of musicians. Today we will be continuing on with our Piano Beginner Basic series. This is week 4 of a 6 week series, so if you haven't already, go back and watch the first few videos so you're all caught up for today's lesson. Now, the last two weeks we've been covering things on the keys, how to find keys on the keyboard, how to use your fingers, and so on. And today we'll be doing sort of another aspect of learning to play piano, which is visually learning how to read music, how to find notes on the page, and how to put it all together so that you can synchronize um, the technical aspect of playing with the mental aspect of reading music and learning how to put it all together. So. I really hope that you're going to learn something from this and I'm excited to get started. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and give us a like on this video to let us know how we're doing here at the 9 to 5 Musician. Okay, let's get into our lesson today. The first thing we'll want to do is take the staff off of our music and learn what it is. The staff is a set of five lines and four spaces and there's one staff for each hand. And this is simply like the foundation of where all the notes go. So the notes are either going to go on the lines or in the spaces, and each line or space corresponds to a specific note. When you have notes, like many notes on the page and they're back to back, the linear aspect of them, so the horizontal plane, is telling you in what order to play them and the type of rhythm tells you how long or short to hold the note. So when you put all of those things together, the vertical what note to play, the horizontal in what order and how long, that's where your music comes together. So now that we know how the staff works, let's talk about different ways to actually learn what notes are on the lines and spaces. There are a few different common methods, but today we'll be focusing on a combination of the landmark method and reading by steps and skips. So the landmark method is choosing about three main notes to sort of memorize and use as a landmark to then figure out the other notes by, by means of distance from the landmark notes. So the most common landmark notes are middle C, the G in the treble clef, and the F in the bass clef. The treble clef is the clef for the right hand, and the bass clef is the clef for the left hand. And these are our three most common landmark notes. Okay guys, so here we have our grand staff. As you can see, we have two sets of our five lines and four spaces. So for our right hand, we see our treble clef here. And for our left hand, bass clef. So that's how those go together. Let's count together our lines. So one, two, three, four, five lines. Same for the bass clef. One, two, three, four, five. And our spaces, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So here are each of our staffs for our right and left hand, and this is how they all fit together on the grand staff. We do need to learn a few notes to get started, of course. The first one we're going to learn is middle C. Middle C gets its name both because it's in the middle of the piano and because it's also visually in the middle of the staff. This is middle C. This is our first note to learn. Our second note has to do with our treble clef symbol. So our treble clef symbol here is oriented around this second line. And the note that's on this second line is G. So now we have C and G. Our bass clef also is oriented around a specific line, which is the third line. Sorry, the fourth line. And this note is F. 
So these are our first three notes that we're going to focus on. And this is kind of like combination of the landmark system and reading by step and skip. So once we have our three main notes, let's say we have a piece of music that looks like this. We can use both the notes we just learned and the step and skip method to read correctly. So first let's identify any notes that we know. We know middle C here. Oh, and we have a G. Now, instead of trying to figure out every single note, there are a lot of like mnemonics that people might use with like making a word of every line on the staff. But then you get in the habit of not connecting all of these notes together and you just look at one individually and figure out each one without a connection to the previous or next one. So if you learn by step and skip, you learn more of the relationship of how far things are apart and how to move between them. So let's start at C. Now, we're going from a line to a space, so this is up one step. So remember how I said if you go up, you go forward in the alphabet. So this becomes D. We have one more step, E. Now, we already filled in G, but let's look at how that becomes a skip. See how we're going from line to line? We're skipping over the space, and that's how we got to G. From G, we have a step. So after G, remember G is our last note, our last letter in our musical alphabet, so we need to go back to A. Then, do we go up a step or a skip? Hmm space to space, skip. So you need to skip in your alphabet too. A, skip B, go to C. Then we're going down a step. Now remember I said if you go down, you need to go backwards in your alphabet. So it's B. So looking at our treble clef, this is a great way to incorporate both the landmark system and the step skip method to read your music efficiently. And let's do the same thing for our bass clef. So let's say you have a melody that looks like this. So let's find our notes that we know first. In our bass clef, we just learned about F. This one is F here. So this is using the landmark system, right? We're kind of using a combination. So we've used the landmark system to find our F. Let's see if there's any other Fs here. Oh, yep, here. So two Fs here. And now let's use our step skip method to figure out the rest. We're going down from a line to a space. This is a step. Down on the staff means backwards in the alphabet. So one before F is E. Another step down and backwards is D. Another step down and backwards is C. Now we're going from space to space. So this is a skip. We need to skip forward in our alphabet since we're going up the staff. So C, skip D, E. We know our F is here. And then we're going up by a step. So one letter after F would be G. This is a really good way to get into reading your notes and practicing figuring them out, both using the landmark system and the step skip method. Now that we've talked about our landmark system, how to read by step and skip, we are done for today. There's plenty more to learn about reading our music, but we'll save that for another day. And I really hope this helps you to get started reading your music, figuring out the notes, and experimenting a little bit on your keyboard as well. If you have any questions about today's lesson, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to make your life better through music.